Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So this is a mailbag vlog, a mailbag vlog. And uh, so here's an email I got from somebody asking me if I would be open to mentorship. At this time, I just don't have time to do personal mentoring. I'm involved with uh, a few businesses. So it's just very time consuming. But who knows, maybe in, maybe in the future because the direction I'm going to be taking in this YouTube channel is more towards business and technology or business and code, entrepreneurial ship and code and technology rather than just being pure programming. Why am I doing that? Because that's really represents my entire career. For me, the coding was just a means to an end. The reason I learned how to code was to help my non tech related business, my import export business. And that I continue to just use coding skills and technology skills to, uh, to do contract work and then to develop my own ideas. Um, I was never really out to become the most amazing coder, but in the process of, of building my businesses and working with software and working with development languages, I just develop skills, right? Uh, on a need to nerd basis, if you will. Anyway, I'm gonna answer this email and uh, yeah, we'll continue from there. So my name is, I'll omit his name, and stumbled on your content through YouTube videos. I like the content since it was really helpful to hear a clear explanation of web development topics. I have been self-studying JavaScript programming for about two years. It's, it's good, you're getting there but I'm having problems finding a job. Ah, hmm. we'll address that soon. I need the advice of a professional developer who has been in my shoes. I wanna see if we can talk about receiving mentorship. As I said, at this time, I can't do personal mentoring with individuals, but you never know, maybe down the road, we'll see what happens. Is there any costs? Are you available? And most importantly, are you open to it? I just answered that. Either way, I like your video because you seem to have a simple route to finding a job. I've looked around the web, but most provide really to hard to understand explanations, which I think you would be right to mentor Ray. He says he's creating a hybrid mobile app for restaurants. Very cool. That's the first thing you got to do is when you have developer skills, at least low level skills, the basics, you should go out there and actually build real things. The first thing you gotta do is build your own project. So let's say for the sake of argument, you're into web development. First thing you gotta do is you gotta put up a website of your own. Now, if you're not a designer, use a nice, simple, elegant template, put together stuff so you can sort of, you can showcase your skill sets. Uh, but most importantly, you have to showcase type of work you've done. So the first thing you gotta do after you put together your website that looks clean and up to date is that you have to have projects that you can demonstrate. If you're getting into web design development, show a couple of websites that you've done for people. How do you get your first website? Do the first couple free. Consider it part of the learning process because building uh, projects for yourself is a good first step, but when you actually build a real website, a real web app for an actual client, a restaurant, uh, a butcher down the street, uh, I don't know, whatever, you uh, guy who makes suits, whatever it is, when you build a real project, a real app, a real website, a real web app for somebody, that takes it to a whole new level. It's like the difference between uh, going into a boxer size class and, and doing boxing punches like this to uh, to a music versus actually getting in the ring with the gloves against a fighter and fighting. It's a whole different game. And there's all these things that come with working with clients that you don't get when you're just working on your own little solo projects. But so first level, after you have your basic skills where you're comfortable writing the code. So let's say you, uh, you're doing the web stack, you're doing HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You don't necessarily have to become a master of JavaScript depending on what your backend is going to be. The backend is the server coding. That might be JavaScript with Node, it might be PHP, eventually with Laravel, it might be Java with Spring, it might be Python with Django, and it might be Ruby with Rails. Well, by the way, I just read a piece, uh, boot camps are starting to, as I had predicted, the boot camps are starting to drop Ruby on Rails because demand is dropping. Anyway, we 
that was pretty easy to predict a couple years ago that was going to happen. Anyhow, so you got to do that. You got once you have your basic skills, so you can actually do basic web apps. In the case of web apps, then you got to go out there and produce some project for some real client, even if they're just starting up an idea for a business. Do it for free. Maybe you're going to be approached by somebody who says, "This I have an idea for a business. I want to do some e-commerce stuff. I can't pay you." But uh, will you do? He said, yeah, in that case, since they got no money, I said, you're beginning to do it for a share, a small share of the business. Say, I'll do it, but I own 25% of the business. I'll do all the coding for you. And that also gives you a portfolio. That's another little tactic, little tangent I'm going to go on here. When I try to do work, I try to get multiple benefits out of a type of work that I'm doing. So if, for example, in this situation where you need to find projects to build so you can build your portfolio so you can start your career as a freelancer or maybe eventually get a job if that's your goal then what you ought to do is is look at um, projects where you can double up on the gain I, I just lost my train of thought my apology so in this situation you find somebody who needs to build an e-commerce shop they don't have any money say I'll do it but I like a piece I'm not you're not going to pay me but I want 25 percent ownership of uh of this website or, or whatever percentage you can negotiate from the person. This way you get a piece of the action and you get that experience and you get that portfolio piece that you need for your, your site. So that's my first tip. Uh, I feel like I'm an intermediate JavaScript developer, lack other skills, soft skills. What direction? So yeah, so once you get your, your app done, have your website, promote the app, and then reach out to local business owners, friends of friends, and say, look, look, look what I did. I want to do other projects and approach them. And uh, you take it from there. What you're going to find in the very beginning, if you're into freelancing, it's, uh, it's a little slow going because you have to uh, make contacts, make connections. And again, the key is, is to showcase some of your work and to get some work with real people real people. You might have to do one or two small projects for free just to sh get some experience dealing with people. And I can almost tell you, I can, I can almost guarantee you through word of mouth, et cetera, et cetera, you put it out there, you're going to start getting contracts. And inevitably what will happen, it may take a year, it may take a year and a half or so, you're going to be so busy you won't know what to do with all the contracts. It happens all the time. The web and web development for small business is still huge big demand especially if you go into the right niches and that's one of the things i'm going to be doing with this channel i'm going to be talking about the new niches 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 little like they're not so little but these areas where you can go down to in terms of being a a real productive or uh, financially uh capable developer a professional developer and here's the thing Let's say you, your ultimate goal is to get a job working for a company. This route that I'm going to start discussing in the next series of vlogs will get you there if you want to as well. So some people, want, some people may want to stay freelance developer and take advantage of the huge potential revenue that you can get there. Other people may say, well, I just want to do freelance for a little while, work my chops, make connections, and then you know what? You're going to get job offers galore. Everybody who's worked for me has either gone on to start their own business, some of them multi-million dollar businesses, or they're employed as uh, professional developers or similar positions doing very well. Every single one. Because the key to all, to all this, to being success, successful, is to A, to develop chops, the skills that you can demonstrate, and to develop what some people call the soft skills, the interpersonal skills, the business skills, which I'm going to be getting into uh, more stress towards entrepreneurialism and that lifestyle and more stress towards, and I don't know, I'll see what you guys think about this if you watch the end of this video. If you watch one of my older videos, I talked about the importance of F, F you money, F you money. And uh, you can look it up, it's F you money. So important. It's it's really made my uh, middle-aged existence so much easier. So important that you start young, too. And I'm going to be getting into this whole thing. And I think you're coining that. I think you're coining a term for that, calling it FIM, 
F-Y-M, FIM. I don't know what you guys think of. You got to get the FIM, because you get the FIM, and you're going to be doing really well, really well, very quickly. For me, peace of mind, choices in life have always been my priority. Have always been my priority. And FIM is the key to all that.